In this video, we're going to talk about inheritance. And in, in, in inheritance is the idea that one class can inherit things from another class, kind of like things might be passed down to a family or that you inherit your hair color or your eye color from your parents. Often we call the, the uh, upper classes parent classes and the things that inherit from them, we call them child classes. So this idea of inheritance is used a lot of different places in programming. Um, so let's look at what I did here. I, I've made a new UML diagram. Okay? And here's our bird class that we started with, but I decided it wasn't adequate because we said fly for our birds. But the fact of the matter is penguins don't fly and ostriches don't fly right? They're special kinds of birds that don't have flight. So not all birds fly. So fly probably shouldn't be an attribute of a generic bird because depending on what kind of bird it is, it may or may not fly. So I've decided that I'm going to separate my birds into flying birds and flightless birds. Okay. So flying birds probably should have a fly method. So down here, I'm going to put fly down here. Right now, I'm not going to give it any more uh, instance fields. So we'll just leave that at fly for flying birds. Uh, what do flightless birds do different? Uh, we're not going to worry about anything for right now. Oops, and now my diagram's messed up. Let me fix that. All right, there, I fixed it. I'm not super good at using this tool for modeling yet, so didn't want to take up a lot of time in the video while I did that. So birds should not have fly. We can keep the eat food there. All birds have wings, so they can all have a wingspan, even ostriches and penguins. Uh, part of the reason ostriches can't fly is because they got tiny little wings for their big giant bodies, right? So they, but they still have wings. So we've moved fly down to flying bird class. Uh, what about eagles, canaries, ostriches, and penguins? Do they have anything different that we could add? They probably do, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. For right now, we are going to make a flying bird class that takes care of our fly method. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then we'll make some eagles and canaries. I've, I've decided that Tweety Bird's a canary. I have no idea what Tweety really is. Um, but for this simulation, Tweety's going to be a canary. And then we'll see how to make those objects that we made before our eagle and our Tweety Bird. Uh, we'll make them from this class structure instead. So I'm going to minimize this. We may have to come back to it, um, but let's try and build our flying bird class and our eagle and canary classes. Right. Go to our code here. So we have class bird up here. Let's add a new class. Uh, there should be two spaces between the end of one class and the beginning of another. Uh, that is in the style guide for Python best practices. There should also be two lines between the end of this class and where my other code starts. Um, there is actually a style guide for Python that says this is how your code should look and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So let's make the flying bird class. This is flying bird and the way we tell it that this class inherits from uh, the bird class is that after it we put in bird. Okay, so in the parentheses, we put the class we're inheriting from. Now I told you before that all classes are, or all things in Python are objects. So even class bird technically inherits from the object class. We could put object, object in here uh, and our code would work just, just fine if we wanted to. Um, but generally, if we don't put anything in the parentheses, it assumes it's inheriting directly from object. It's kind of a shortcut. So we don't have to put that. But in this case, we're making a flying bird that does inherit from bird. Now, what does that mean? That means 
that the flying bird is automatically going to have a wingspan and a name and health. Okay. The one thing we said about flying bird, if we go back to our diagram, is that it has the fly method, not the bird. So we're going to move this code. We're going to take it out. Get rid of the extra spaces there. And I'm going to put it inside my bird class. So now the flying bird class actually contains the code for flying. Okay. Now what does that change down here? Well, when I create, uh, well, we're not done yet. Let's go ahead. I want to do one other thing. We created the flying bird class. Now in our diagram, we had eagle and canary down here. They didn't have anything special of their own like Flying Bird did with the fly, but we'll go ahead and create them as empty classes that inherit from Flying Bird. We'll do that anyway, because later on we might maybe we'll add a special feature to Eagle, or maybe we'll add a special feature to Canary. Let's add classes for those. So class Eagle is going to inherit from Flying Bird. And it doesn't have any code. And in order for us to, to create a class that doesn't have any code in it, that just inherits, um, we need to use the word pass. Basically, it fills it in. The interpreter will interpret this as a class that doesn't do anything right now other than inherit the things from its parents. And we'll do class canary which also inherits from flying bird. And it will just have a pass for now. And two lines between each class. We have an extra line here. One, two, two blank lines, two blank lines, two blank lines. All right, so what does that change about our code down here? Um, when I create my bird Tweety, I don't want to create just a bird, I want to create a canary. I could create it as a, a generic bird. The problem is uh, generic birds don't know how to fly anymore. So let me leave it a bird and try and run it once. So if I can create Tweety as a generic bird and Murica as a generic bird and tell them to fly, we look back at this diagram, birds don't know how to fly, only flying birds do. So we're creating them as birds right now. If I run it, it won't work. And it says, bird object has no attribute called fly. So when I create Tweety, I'll create Tweety as a canary. And I'll create my eagle as an eagle. And because of inheritance, even though eagles don't have any code in them and canaries don't have any code, they're going to inherit the method fly from flying bird, and they'll inherit name and wingspan from the bird class. And they will still work just fine. Let's try and run it. And it works just fine. I still get Tweety uh, with four, and remember Tweety I modified to print its health out. My eagle gets created just fine as an eagle. They both know how to fly because they inherited it from the flying bird class. They both know how to eat because they inherited that from the bird class. They know how to take damage still because that method still exists in the bird class. All right, so that's inheritance. We didn't write any code we moved one piece of code, didn't write any for these two, and they still had the same instance fields, and they still had the same methods of, that they inherited from their parents. Now let's go back to our diagram. I am going to say that ostriches um, let's add
told you I wasn't very good at this uh, as far as the diagramming tool goes. I wanted that line to be above there. There we go. Because this is a method, ostriches are going to be able to run because ostriches run really fast. That's something that they do differently from other birds. I mean, all, all birds can probably run a little bit, but ostriches are known to run. So we'll put in ostriches for a run method. What do penguins do that are different? Is that a, there, the penguins can swim. All right, so let's create our flightless bird class. Uh, we'll create our ostrich class with a run method and our penguin with a swim method. Come back over here. Class ostrich. Ah, before we do that, class flightless bird. Um, now, do we need flightless bird? Could they inherit directly from bird? Technically, they could probably inherit because right now we're not going to get, we're not going to have any special methods or any special um, instance variables in flightless bird. So they could technically inherit directly from bird if we wanted them to. However, I'm going to keep this structure. It's the, the structure I decided in my mind I want later on. I might want to add something special that flightless birds can do. In this case, I'm keeping their specialties. And, and that's what inheritance is about, specialties, right? This is a generic bird. This is a bird that can fly. It's more specialized. This is a bird that can't fly. It could be more specialized. And things that inherit from it, like ostrich, is going to be specialized by having a run method. And the penguin is going to be specialized by having a swim method. So inheritance is all about taking what we already have, writing some additional code to make the child classes more specialized than the parent classes. Over here we did it with flying bird. Over here we're going to do it directly in the ostrich and penguin classes. But I'm still going to leave flightless bird there because I might need it someday for growth. So flightless bird inherits from bird. We said by default, it's not going to do anything special right now. Then we'll create another class called ostrich that inherits from flightless bird. And what did we say ostriches are going to do? They're going to have a, a run method. Let's define a method, method for an ostrich called run. Always need the self parameter, and I can type run with a u like it's supposed to be. Um, does it need any other parameters? I don't think so. Maybe later we'll want to add something, but I don't, right now we'll say it doesn't. And what will we do when the ostrich is running? We'll just print um, self.name is running fast. And our other class is our penguin class. It also inherits from flightless bird. <coughs> Excuse me. And it has a method called swim. Not going to take any parameters, just, it'll just have the self parameter. Colon. Know that because it didn't automatically indent for me. Um, and for that, we'll print the 
name is swimming. Okay, so now I have all the classes that I had in my diagram. I've got the methods that I've decided to put in our specializations where they need to be. Let's test our classes by actually creating all these things. Now, could we create a flightless bird? We could create a generic flightless bird. As you know, in uh, Java, if we had a class that we never really wanted to create the generic version of it, we only wanted to create the specialized versions, we could make this an abstract class. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, talk about that later. Abstraction and uh, abstract classes. So we're going to come down here. Let's add uh, my ostrich, which is going to be an ostrich. whose name is, we'll call him Rich. And he has a wingspan of six inches, which is not nearly enough to get a big giant ostrich off the ground. And let's give him a different health. Let's give him a health of 25. He's kind of a sickly ostrich. And then we can, let's print out the information about our ostrich. Print its name. Wingspan. And we'll print his health. And then let's ask him to swim, uh, to run for us. because he should know how to run. Test that. And her health. So we're still looking at this health. Uh, we shouldn't be using it because it has the underscore in front of it. I could provide a method that gets the health if I wanted to, but I did. Fine. Typos. Which has no attribute run does have an attribute run with a capital R though. There we go. Rich is running fast. So we created an ostrich named Rich. Um, health of 25. Even, even in his poor health, he's still running fast here. So our ostrich works. Uh, let's try this. My ostrich that fly okay and we get that ostrich has no attribute fly because ostriches can't fly if we go back and look at our diagram ostriches can run they didn't pick up anything from the flightless bird class bird class and the bird class doesn't have a fly method only flying birds can fly so our structure is working Grand scheme. Let's create my penguin. Uh, so you see here when we when we do these things, we create the classes. We write code somewhere to test the classes and make sure they work. 
then if we ever modify any of our code up here, we can come up and run this code to make sure we didn't break anything. Uh, my penguin is a penguin whose name is uh, calling Bengu. He has a wingspan five inches and he's a very healthy penguin because there's lots of fish for him to eat. I think penguins eat fish, don't they? Sure they do. Um, let's print out all that information about my penguin. So I'm gonna copy that line, change all the And then we'll have my penguin. We'll have him swim. I'm not being very consistent. I am going to change these. I'm going to make the methods look. Because that's what I did everywhere else. All right, ostrich has no attribute fly. I left that in. I should have taken it out. All right, so I created my penguin named Pengu. Pengu is swimming. Rich is flying. Tweety's eating worms. America's eating mice. Hey, can our penguins still eat? Oh, I have to tell him what to eat. You just said it. Fish. Um, Bengu is eating fish. There we go. It works. Inheritance works. We didn't have to write, we didn't have to repeat all this code in our bird class for each one of these classes. We only wrote the code for the specializations in each one of them. One last note I want to make for those of, that have programmed in Java and C Sharp. We often talk about um, overloading methods so we can have different constructors. You cannot do that in Python. You don't overload methods. If I made a second init method with different parameters, only the second one that the interpreter gets to will matter. Okay. So instead in, in uh, Python, we tend to do, and I didn't explain that when I first talked about it, when I made this health with a default value, that allowed me to do a constructor and send either two parameters or three parameters. So this is the, the kind of the way we do uh, overloading of methods in Python. And that may not make sense to those of you that haven't uh, joined, uh, programmed in other languages before, but for the people that, uh, that have, I wanted to make sure that was a distinction that you saw.